Hi everyone, so today we will talk about something called as the weighted AM GM HM inequality. It's a very nice extrapolation to the standard AM GM HM that we usually use. So we're going to see what this concept of weighted means is and of course we'll see how we can apply that to this question. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Okay, so this is a problem number two from the Croatian Math Olympiad back in the year 1997. And in this video, we're going to talk about the weighted AMG HM inequality. We're going to look at an interesting result. We're actually going to prove that result. And then we have seen the book sessions of the National Math Olympias and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so we need to prove this thing, right, for distinct positive real numbers ABC. A couple of things. First, we need to prove A raised to power A, B raised to power B, C raised to power C is greater than A raised to power B, B raised to power C, C raised to power A. So nice cyclic structure being formed on the right hand side. For all distinct positive real numbers a b c now that thing might seem very obvious it might seem very it's, it might seem something that is irrelevant but we're actually going to see that that is going to be critical to this problem right but before we get to that point i think it's worthwhile discussing what this weighted amgm is right so weighted amgm hm so these are just a couple of results that you should keep in mind in your repertoire and it just states that the weighted AM, we represent that as A star, weighted AM. This is A1M1 plus A2M2, all the way up to ANMN, divided by M1 plus M2, all the way up to MN. Similarly, the weighted geometric mean, we represent that as G star, is basically A1M1, or sorry, A1 raised to the power M1, multiplied by a2 raised for m2 and you keep on multiplying this all the way up to a n m n and you raise it to 1 by m1 plus m2 all the way up to m n so again this is to the power actually okay yeah great so this is something that we call the weighted gm weighted geometric mean inequality a result actually then we have the weighted hm which is m1 plus m2 plus m3 all the way up to mn divide by m1 by a1 plus m2 by a2 all the way up to mn by a n so what is this this is effectively three results that i've written and these results are called the weighted amg and weighted means effectively and many a times we just use the standard amg mhm inequality and that actually suffices for a very large volume of problems. But in certain situations, we need to use this concept of weighted means to kind of simplify down the question quite a bit. So now let's talk about the inequality. This is effectively just the result, right? So like we had AM is greater than or equal to GM, which in turn is greater than or equal to HM. Here we will have A star is greater than or equal to G star, greater than or equal to H star. Basically the same order in a way, right? The same order the weighted means is also falling and let me also discuss the equality case so equality what is equality when basically a star g star and h star all are equal equality happens when a1 is equal to a2 is equal to a3 all these terms are equal to one another so all ais are equal to one another right when that happens a star is equal to g star is equal to h star that is the equality case in all other general cases. You can write this greater than or equal to symbol. Right? That is great. Now, a couple of things right now. You remember at the start of this problem, I had mentioned that these two things are going to be very critical to solving the problem. Now, they've given positive real numbers ABC. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind. Whenever you're using AM, GM, HM, keep in mind that that result is effectively only applicable for positive real numbers. You cannot use them for negatives. Now, because A, B, and C are positive, we can use the mean inequality without without fearing anything. And that's the first thing, you know, we, we are good to go. We are good to use the weighted means inequality. Secondly, they have given distinct 
Now, if you see over here, the equality happens and all of them are same. But because they are distinct, the greater than or equal to inequality goes down and we have the strict inequality. So basically, I can write A star is greater than G star is greater than H star, right? I do not need to consider the greater than or equal to. In general, yes. In general, yes, we have the greater than or equal to symbol like we have, I have written right now. But because they have said distinct in the question, they have explicitly said A, B and C are distinct. That means that they can never be equal. The equality case can never happen. And therefore, I can use the strict inequality, right? When I'm using this in this problem, right? So yeah, that being said, let's just jump into the problem. Again, just to reiterate, we need to prove a raised power a, b raised power b, c raised power c is greater than a raised power b, b raised power c times c raised power a. Okay, this is amazing, right? So first, first I'm going to use the weighted g m h m inequality, right? So basically, g star is greater than h star. And once I do that, I'll get the a plus b plus c at root of a raised power a, b raised power b, c raised power c is greater than a plus b plus c divided by a times 1 by a plus b times 1 by b plus c times 1 by c. But this essentially means that the a plus b plus c at root of a is for a, b is for b, c is for c is greater than a plus b plus c by 3. And that's great because I can just label that as result number 1. And I'll use that somewhere down the line. Right? Now, what next? Now, let me also just use the weighted AMGM inequality, right? So basically here, A star is greater than G star. Now again, just to reiterate, I'm using the strict inequality because they have said distinct. Had they not said distinct, I would have to consider greater than or equal to. But since they are, they are, since they are distinct, explicitly distinct, I can just ignore the equality case. I can use the strict inequality. Okay, great. That aside, let's just plug in the weighted AMGM and when you plug this into the formula, you will simply get AB plus BC plus AC divided by A plus B plus C, which is greater than the A plus B plus C at root of A is for B, B is for C, C is for A, which is amazing. Equation number two. So you notice something. This A is for A, B is for B, C is for C is greater than this. That is what we have to prove. And the good thing is the radicals on both of these expressions are the same. So if you can effectively raise them to the same power and effectively they will be, uh, the inequality will satisfy, right? So basically I effectively need to prove this, which I've written in bracket is greater than this, which I've written in bracket. These two terms I need to emphasize over here, right? I need to focus my energy over here. So now with that being said, let me make an assertion. If, you know, if, a plus B plus C by 3 is greater than or equal to AB plus BC plus AC divided by A plus B plus C. If you actually notice, A plus B plus C divided by 3 is the right hand side of equation number 1. Similarly, AB plus BC plus AC divided by ABC, A plus B plus C is the left hand side of equation number 2 or result number 2. Right? So if this happens, then by 1 and 2, I can write very conveniently the a plus b plus c at root of a raised power a b raised power b c raised power c will be greater than a plus b plus c by 3. This is by equation number 1 or by result number 1, which will be greater than or equal to a b plus b c plus a c divided by a plus b plus c, which is by the claim that I had made by the if statement. And that is going to be greater than the a plus b plus c at root of a raised per b, b raised per c, c raised per a from result number 2. So basically, if my claim is true, if it is true, then we have this, you know, a sequence of, in a, in a way, a sequence of inequalities over here. We have this entire result accumulated into just, uh, just one line, basically. So that essentially implies, that essentially implies that the a plus b plus c at root of a is for a, b is for b, c is for c will be greater than this thing will be greater than the a plus b plus c at root of a is for b, b is for c, c is for a because this thing will obviously be greater than this thing. Correct. So that essentially implies that a is for a, b is for b, c is for c will be greater than 
a raised power b b raised power c times c raised power a and that is what we have to prove so effectively 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 if my claim is true if my claim is true then this equation is true this inequality is true and if that is true my original original inequality which i had to prove is also true so therefore it suffices to prove the assertion that i had made right so it, therefore it suffices to prove the following and what is that it is basically the claim that i had made which was a plus b plus c divided by 3 is greater than or equal to a b plus b c plus a c divided by a plus b plus c so effectively if this claim right if effectively this claim what i had made over here if that is true then my then my question is done right and that's awesome because this is actually very trivial to prove right i can just multiply this i can just cross multiply and again cross multiply can be done because you have positive quantities right in the question they've explicitly given us positive numbers so therefore we can very easily cross multiply without having any issues so this just becomes a square plus b square plus c square plus 2 a b plus b c plus a c is greater than or equal to 3 times a b plus b c plus a c that effectively becomes a square plus b square plus c square minus a b plus b c plus a c is greater than or equal to 0 but those of you who are familiar with this kind of algebra this is actually always true and this is actually very easy to see because a square plus b square plus c square minus a b plus b c plus a c has a very nice has a very nice closed form in a way this is nothing but half a minus b whole squared plus b minus c whole squared plus c minus a whole squared and if you actually notice this is just the sum of squares it's just a sum of three squares and when you know when it is a sum of squares it's always greater than or equal to zero because a square itself is greater than or equal to zero so basically this thing which is equal to this expression will always be greater than or equal to zero that means are this this what we have written over here this this inequality is true if that inequality is true that means my claim is true right what we intended to prove my assertion is true and if my assertion is true that means our original inequality is also true and hence the question has been proved so I think this is a very nice application of the weighted means and hope you learned something. Okay, so moving on, we have some book sessions for National Math Olympiads, Elementary Nebba Theory by David Burton, Problem Solving Strategies by Arthur and Jell, Functional Equations by Venkata Chala, Problems in Plane Geometry by Sharikin, Elementary Number 3 by Sierpinski, Graph Theory by Harari, and Combinatrix by Brualdi. Okay, so at the end, we have a simple level challenging problem. And if n is a positive integer, so you are free to use the weighted means because it's positive. Prove the following inequality. So like always, maybe give it a try. If you're able to do it, let me know. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Tinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit Chinta.com.